In today's Neville Goddard-based discussion, we are going to build upon what we talked about in the last video, which was the seven-day mental diet revisited from a prosperity perspective in relation to what Emmett Fox had contributed to the understanding of mental diets or maintaining an ideal state of mind, as well as we brought up the concept of the definite chief aim, which we borrowed from Think and Grow Rich, which is selecting a goal and committing to it, and on the journey of commitment to the realization of the goal, we maintain a certain state of mind. Now, Neville Goddard says this really well. He says, Now we will go back to the second of Genesis, and it is said that God placed man in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now when you read the story, you think it happened thousands of years ago, but I've come to tell you that it is now. You are now in the Garden of Eden, and you think you are shut out or banished. You are in it, and the garden is your mind. But you need, like every gardener, you need pruning shears. For you have slept, as you are told in the second chapter, having slept, weeds have appeared in the garden, and the weeds are revealing themselves in the conditions and circumstances of life. So the way we want to look at this is that the garden of the mind, the inner world, is expressing itself, revealing itself, externalizing itself in certain conditions and circumstances that play out as theater. These are the branches that reach out into the conditions and circumstances of our life. Now, as we experience these conditions and circumstances, which were a result of past planting of certain weed seeds or certain thought processes that we would say we don't want, beliefs and assumptions, it seems to cloud the understanding that what we desire to be brought forth will be brought forth, or it creates unnecessary complexity and convolution on the journey. And we can find ourselves in places of doubt, indecision, and overly identified with fear, thus feeling ourselves immobilized and crippled and overthinking, and as a result of that, further instilling those thought processes, or dwelling, as we talked about this in the last video, encouraging and dwelling those thoughts to further recreate itself as further conditions and circumstances in life. Now, to discuss this particular concept, which we have talked about before, but to get deeper into it, I want to reflect upon a story that I learned from a book that I was very much a fan of, maybe about 10 or 15 years ago. It was called the Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. Now, in this book, The Slight Edge, he spoke of the perspective of daily incremental habits or daily habits producing incremental progress when compounded over time, producing radical results or exponential results. And from the perspective of Neville's information, it's about doing what is accurate and even integrating the concept of Wu Wei, which is knowing when to act and when not to act, otherwise referred to as inspired action. So it's not just about doing things, but it's about doing the accurate and right things, and even knowing when not to do, which is revealed as a result of what has been impressed on the subconscious mind, the vision that we selected in our imagination, as well as the other things that we are imagining all day long, dwelling in all day long, that is further recreating itself, and we can make it more complicated and complex by convoluting those other elements into the day-to-day -day behaviors and thus doing more things that masquerade as accomplishment. Rather, it's busy work. It's not really effective work. So this story, which is about this plant called the water hyacinth, stood with me in this concept of compound effect and incremental progress, but it also translates over to quantum leap or radical change in reality as a result of radical change of mind, which is a result of selecting in our imagination that what we desire and assuming it to be done, as well as maintaining the garden of mind. So let's get into this story. The water hyacinth can typically be found floating on the surface of ponds in warm climates around the world. And it is a beautiful plant with delicate six petal flowers that range from purplish blue to lavender to pink. 
The water hyacinth is one of the most productive plants on Earth, with a reproductive rate that astonishes botanists and ecologists. A single plant can produce as many as 5,000 seeds, but its preferred method for colonizing a new era is not to cast its seeds to the wind and water, but instead to grow by doubling itself, sending out short runner stems that become daughter plants, kind of like a mind map, which is, you could say, a belief spawning into related beliefs or sub-beliefs or sub-thoughts in relation to that initial stem. The first day this little water hyacinth appears, nobody but the water even noticed it was there. Nobody noticed it on the second day either, as it doubled underneath the water. Nor the third, nor the fourth, as it doubled again and then once more. It was so insignificant, in fact, that for the first two weeks, even though it doubled in size every day, you would have to search really hard to see it at all. By the 15th day, it had reproduced to cover barely one square foot of water, a tiny dollop of lavender pink dotting the pond's glassy green surface. On day 20, two-thirds of the way through the month, one person passing by the pond noticed a little patch of foliage floating off to the side, but mistook it for a lost bath towel or perhaps a discarded piece of wrapping paper. More than a week later, on day 29, half the pond's surface was still open water. And on day 30, just 24 hours later, the water's surface had totally disappeared. The entire pond had been overtaken by a rich blanket of purple-pink water hyacinth. So the idea behind this, it's symbolic to our discussion here, is that from the inner world perspective, or garden of mind perspective, or as Neville stated, the garden of Eden perspective, the inner thoughts continue to multiply as we tend to the garden by maintaining true to the vision, by entertaining and dwelling in thoughts in relation to the vision, by dwelling in those particular thoughts, we are also allowing that information to externalize. This particular plant is focused on multiplying itself. And it does so in a way that spawns related daughter plants. So we could say this as daughter thoughts or related thoughts or thoughts of inharmony and in contribution. So it spawns related thoughts to persist in certain thoughts that are in relation to your vision. For example, if you encounter a certain circumstance in the outer world that seems to deny that which you desire to bring forth, recognize that you are the interpreter of that particular experience. And you have the power to find the accurate interpretation within. We call this in the last few discussions, accurate thinking and intuitive understanding. Intuitive understanding is simply knowing. You know. So when you experience something in the outer world and you feel reactive in a way that you feel that it's denying what you want to bring forth, you can say, what's a more empowering way of looking at this? For example, I had a message sent to me about rejection in selling. And I said, Rather than feeling that you are not worthy when you get rejected in selling, you can realize the truth, the accurate thought of the rejection, which is A, optimization data, as you can figure out how to adjust your position, your unique selling proposition, or a lot of other things that we talk about in selling, and move forward with another approach to be able to lead you down the pathway to bringing forth success. Another way of looking at it is the recognition that they're not rejecting you. That if you believe that they're rejecting you, then you can create an affirmation that maybe goes something like this. I realize that I am divine perfection. I realize that they are divine perfection. I, as a result, have the ability to understand that in the moment, as well as reflection upon the end of the day, and recognize that they are actually helping me produce the result by providing me the optimization data, as well as providing me 
different stimulus that reveals the thoughts that I'm having in my mind in relation to the concept of myself. And that's one of the main reasons why I'm a huge fan of Neville's work because he focuses on the concept of self and changing the concept of self, which is found in the garden of mind, and translating that into the behaviors, the relations that we're having in the outer world. So perhaps the prospect is revealing attributes within ourselves that is playing out in theater, in which we are calling it rejection and not good enough, rather than looking at it as what can be done about it, adjusting the product, the positioning, the different kinds of behaviors or way we communicate when we are interacting with the prospect, and going even deeper that, how we assume and believe them to be in relation to our vision. Do we see them in contribution, as in they are the right match, or do we see them as denial, as in they are rejecting us because we are not good enough, or our product is not good enough. When you know your product is a value, then you know your product is good enough. Assume it is done, that others are ready to receive that value that you created. Another way of looking at this story is outer, because we don't usually see the effects on the surface unless we closely look. Perhaps it's a sign or synchronicity, which represents the evidence that things are moving. Unless you know what you're doing and you've created success again and again and again, then you know then once you change your concept of self and you entertain certain thoughts, you assume the vision is done, then what ends up happening is you experience a journey in which you'll see signs. You'll see people communicating to you differently. For example, in the world of entrepreneurship, when you commit to the journey, when you're convicted on the vision of the success that you want to bring forth, you'll start to notice that people are talking to you about entrepreneurial endeavors, or people will be inspiring you for certain business ideas or directing you into certain circumstances that will lead into the realization. One story that comes to mind when I was building my business back in 2009, my IT business specifically, I went with one of my friends to a restaurant in Toronto and we were hanging out there grabbing some lunch. And I actually ran into one of my friends from high school. So I connected with him and I said, hey, you know, what are you up to? And he was mentioning to me that him and a business partner were starting a restaurant slash bar slash club down the street. And I mentioned to him that I also just got into leaving corporate and starting an IT business, and I'm looking to build it. And he said, you know what, maybe you can help us with some stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I help a bar, restaurant, slash nightclub with IT services? But intuitively, right then and there, I knew that things were changing as a result of moving towards my vision, saturating my mind with information that was in relation to being an entrepreneur. I mentioned this many times that it was easier for me to change my environment and go full into entrepreneurship because then I would be dwelling in certain thoughts more so each day rather than working full time, which during that time I was engaged with the day-to-day -day activities and the thought processes related to my job. So in order to saturate my mind, I left corporate and went into my business. Now he brings me over to this restaurant slash bar slash nightclub had multiple parts to it. And he introduced me to the business partner that he has. And he was saying that he needed a point of sale system. And that wasn't something that I offered as far as IT services. Now, knowing that it was going to lead into something and keeping my mind open because the end result was the end result. Business success, entrepreneurial success, certain amount of income, monthly income, yearly income. I was open to how it would play out in theater. What ended up happening was I connected with one of my mentors and he mentioned to me a software called Open Bravo. Open Bravo is an open source point of sale system software that you can take, you can rebrand, you can customize, and you can resell it. And a number of consultants were doing that. So I went to work and I built this point of sale system for them. And they introduced me to a number of different restaurants, and retail locations, and I ended up selling a whole solution as part of my IT business. So not only was I doing the office IT support and the other things that I was doing, the wireless networks and so forth, I also had another segment of my business which was dedicated to this point of sale system. I actually ended up hiring somebody to help me with this, and we would work together on this segment of the business. Now, 
I didn't have this idea that that's the way it was going to play out in theater. But I did have a sign that showed up. It was that conversation. And I knew it in the moment. That is an effect of saturating the mind in which I chose to be in a certain environment that would encourage certain entrepreneurial thoughts, thought processes that brought forth that particular event or circumstance that led to the building of that business. So when we look at this particular story here, we reflect upon it, we'll see that for a period of time, as a result of adhering to the mental diet and encouraging thoughts that are in relation and in harmony to the vision, we might not see a ton of evidence. And this is where a lot of people give up. You know, I could have given up if I had this state of mind that I did not recognize how one thing leads to the next. Maybe I would have said, no, I don't do that kind of stuff. I do this other kind of stuff. Now, interestingly enough, from doing a lot of those point of sale systems, I was referred to other IT clients for office network support and so forth. And I was also referred for different kinds of business that I got involved with, such as referral marketing, joint ventures, which is essentially combining somebody's assets and relationships in creative ways and another company's relationships and assets in creative ways to bring forth another profit center. All those things came as a result of allowing myself to go down this intuitive thread, which may on the surface might not seem logical to one person and even seem limited to another person. But from my perspective, the accurate thinking and the intuitive understanding from within, it made sense. Now, this making sense is found when you maintain your ideal state of mind or keep your garden of the mind. Because so much of the information that we take in from this outer world appears to suggest to go down a different thread which is not in relation to your vision. And we want to be understanding and present to see what kind of interpretations we're giving to that information so that we can change those interpretations to keep it on our vision. So this is a multidimensional way of saying maintaining focus. So thus we want to keep our garden of the mind. So Neville states, you don't accept one thing in the world as final unless it conforms to the ideal you want to realize in the world. So you commit to a vision and you move down this pathway to the realization of your vision. And you support, you encourage thoughts that are building themselves, compounding themselves under the surface, maybe not revealing itself on the journey as much as you would like, but that's based on a bias of how much you think you should see rather than actually how it works. And the way to maintain this faith is to observe any kind of interpretations we're giving to the experiences on the bridge of incidents, our journey, and changing it so it conforms to the ideal, such as the example that I gave with how I interacted with my friend and how he brought up the need to create that particular software. And by the way, I ended up creating a whole bunch of those point of sale systems that the Open Bravo community started reaching out to me, asking me for advice, because I took that software and really customized it. And I could have turned it into a bigger business. Because here's the thing about it. In relation to entrepreneurial success, when I had transitioned out of my IT business in 2013, I started this channel and I was doing a whole bunch of other things. Each one of those things were producing success joint ventures, internet business solutions. I was also doing some agency work, as in I was creating a little marketing agency. I was doing some consulting, and I was doing other kinds of things, coaching, consulting, as well as converting leads into clients on a percentage on profit. I was doing a number of things. Each one of those things were growing, each one of them. And each one of them, if I had chosen to stay consistent on each or any one of those based on preference would have translated to the level of success that you see now in this channel. And even with this channel, there's a number of initiatives that I'm involved with in the backgrounds where those are also producing a lot of success. So it goes to show you that if the train of thought is that you will bring forth what you desire and everything is in harmony and contribution to your vision, you'll actually see how it is so and then you'll be able to find all these distinct pathways that are in relation to you. And each one of them can produce success 
if staying committed and staying on the course. And relating back to Neville's information, it's more specifically put that what we're doing is we're changing the interpretations of what we're experiencing on the day-to-day journey in ways that it conforms to our ideal. We'll talk about some ways in a moment. And he says, but you do it daily. If you do not prune it daily, as in keep the garden of the mind, you will get out of the habit, then weeds will grow. Every man who really is a gardener, who really calls himself a gardener, a gardener in the garden of God, for every day is the opportunity to really prune the tree, this wonderful tree. As discussed in some of our previous Neville conversations, that we were given the two gifts, the gifts of speech and mind. Mind, when you go into a meditation, you experience the pureness of mind in a deep meditation. Then the mind gets filled up with what? Inner speech or imagination or thoughts or beliefs and assumptions. And these elements is externalizing itself as what we would call bridge of incidents as well as also what we would call destination or goals or end result. And he says, and so everyone that you meet is a branch rooted in the vine that you are and you are that special tree in the garden of God, a tree bearing life, a tree bearing fruit for the food of the nations. You are that one. So this five sensory experience is then looked at from the perspective of what am I planting in my mind? Am I staying focused, such as the example given by the water hyacinth? Or am I allowing certain kinds of interpretations to fall into my mind, which I'm giving the interpretations to within, to cloud or create unnecessary complexity and friction, thus making my journey more stressful than it has to be. So here are three ways to help us do it. Number one is reflect deeply and revise. So in my discussion where I brought up the flow-based day, which if you haven't watched that, I recommend watching that, I talk about the importance of reflecting at a certain point, perhaps at the end of the day, and revising the different experiences that you've had that do not conform to the ideal. For example, the client that brought up sales, they could take the rejection that they are experiencing or that particular theater that played out, and they could revise it that it would happen in an ideal way in their imagination and assume that to be done, such as they can see the interaction with the other person and they're making the offer and the other person responds in a way that says, what you have to offer is really valuable. And I'm realizing through our conversation that it is of benefit. And this is actually what I was looking for. And they can play that same story again and again and again and fall asleep to that assumption. Now, as they do that, what they'll notice is that their interactions while they are prospecting or selling will change because they're not forming that assumption that they're not good enough or further emphasizing that they are not good enough as a result of that particular rejection. Number two, paint your present from your future via belief real time. So keep this important distinction as you move down the journey to bringing forth your vision. One person's empowering belief can be another person's limiting belief. For example, if you go back to my entrepreneurial example, someone could have said to me, Joseph, you're spreading yourself out too thin. Just focus on selling the IT services and don't get into point of sale systems. From my perspective, I would consider that a limiting belief because I have the ability to, and I believe we all have the ability to, but we can exercise that ability to bring forth success in nonlinear ways in which I produced the end result, grew my IT business to 50 plus clients in 2013 and transitioned away from it nicely into other business initiatives. Now, I did it in a nonlinear way. So that particular assumption that the person shared with me could be considered a limiting belief for myself. But for another person, that sticking with one thing all the way to completion can be considered an empowering belief. Certainly, we have to be able to accurately assess from within. So in selecting beliefs, we want to select the beliefs that are in harmony with our vision, in harmony with what I call spirit of harmony, benefit for you, others, divine, and evolution. This is how we create a flow-based journey to the destination. So here are some actual beliefs that we can look into to further emphasize how one person's empowering beliefs can be another person's limiting beliefs. 
So one is, I need direction before moving forward, or I move forward without needing direction. Now, one person can look at this and say, it's empowering to have mastermind or mentors in my life because they give me direction, and this is what contributes to success. Thus, it is an empowering belief for them. Another person might look at it and say, I'm going to find the answers within. As brought up in the James Allen quote in our last Neville Goddard discussion, it was speaking from the perspective of all answers are found within. So you can find the answers in the outer world or you can find the answers within. You can find the answers from another person in the outer world to give you direction to move forward towards your vision or you can find the answers within to give you direction to move forward towards the vision. It's a personal preference and you are the interpreter. We are still molding this reality based on our interpretations from within. Another one, which is common in the entrepreneurial slash corporate world, is trading time for money or trading value for money. Which one is better? Well, some individuals make a lot of money by trading their time. They bill a lot per hour. So they make really good money by trading time for money. And some individuals make a lot by trading value for money. And I've even heard of another consultant whose management consultant, which is based on trading his time, is earning him millions of dollars a year. So these beliefs are relative and in relation to your vision. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because sometimes what happens is the person can become confused. They can say, one person said this and another person said that. Which one is better? And I'll say, well, if you ask yourself what is in relation and harmony to your vision and recognize that part of this journey is learning to build a relationship with yourself and trusting yourself and building that connection with the divine realm within, you can see how this circumstance is actually helping you because it's stimulating you to find the answers within. Another one is security. Some might say security is found by not taking risks. And some might say security is found by taking more risks or calculated risks. So which one is right? Well, the answer is it depends based on their perspective. Because again, referring back to the water high as an example, paint your present from your future via the beliefs real time. So much of our beliefs have been formed based on suggestions from the outer world and thus interpreted those suggestions as written in stone type of beliefs that we must adhere to. Now, some of those beliefs are still valid and related to your vision, and some might not be. And perhaps in another vision, those beliefs will be related. But you are the deciding fact. And all of this can be simplified by maintaining your ideal state of mind. You automatically align yourself with the beliefs, the assumptions, and the interpretations based on experience that you have on the day-to-day -day that is in harmony with your vision, and this doesn't become an overthinking process. If you do find yourself thinking too much about certain circumstances and how to relate to these circumstances, then definitely you can work with certain subconscious mind modalities, like the ones that I use, which are only the ones that I use. Subconscious mind audio, self-talk, revision, and environment. Yes, environment can be even used as a way of affirming certain kinds of beliefs, assumptions, and interpretations onto the subconscious mind. And I did a discussion on that, and I'll put a link in the description to my environment. And I also did a discussion on my four modalities. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. And another thing that I do that I found to be really helpful is releasing from stagnation. So if you find yourself stuck, overthinking, Releasing from stagnation can be very helpful via inspiration. So these are three things that I've done to help me with this. Some of you know I'm a huge fan of the concept of being very minimal as far as the things that I own. Clearing the clutter. In fact, I made a video in 2013, which was the first official video that I put on this channel that became really popular, which when I had transitioned out of doing my IT business, I got rid of everything and went to Europe and lived in Europe. And I wasn't backpacking. I just minimized all my possessions and went to Europe. And I was living with my ex-girlfriend at the time in Austria. Something like that really helped me because it cleared up a lot of stuff that I was identifying with in my environment during the journey and allowed my mind to be like a blank canvas in which I started to paint the other initiatives for the next level of journey that I wanted to create, which part of it was this channel. And the same is to be said by changing the environment, which I'm a huge fan of. So if I go and live in different environments, and I've lived in many countries, I was in Los Angeles for a number of years, a handful of years ago, some of you might know that for consulting deals. I was in Playa del Carmen, Mexico, I lived in Europe, 
And by changing the environment and staying in different environments for extended periods of time, I find that the associations that I have to the same environment can be released and then I can reassociate my thought processes to outer world elements as a result of changing my environment, thus stimulating even new ideas, insights, and perspectives, as well as doing something different. Now, even in that flow-based video where I brought up, I'm a huge fan of routines, but I'm also a fan of spontaneity. So if you ask me which one is better, being spontaneous or having a routine, for me, I actually do both. I integrate both. It's more about what's in harmony. I'm a person of ratios rather than being biased to one side or another. So doing something different is something that I incorporate in my day-to-day -day activities and in my life because this allows myself to stimulate certain thought processes. So if we're looking at this from the garden of mind perspective, this is akin to cultivation or maintaining the soil. So the clearing the clutter, changing the environment, doing something different has been very helpful for me because it's related to keeping the mind, steering things up, exploring and finding new territories in the mind. You can explore different aspects of yourself by traveling into different areas in a life, outer world, which are reflective of the mind, yes, that will further stimulate revealing the mind, just as you would go into different parts of your mind and find the expressions of the exploration of different parts of your mind externalized as your experiences in reality. So it's very important then to maintain this ideal state of mind, keep the garden of mind, adhere to something that is akin to a mental diet, and make this a way of life. And I recommend watching the video that I did on Thursday because the distinction was, what are you dwelling in? So it's not so much the thoughts that fall into the mind for whatever the reason may be, but rather the dwelling in those thoughts. And we want to dwell in the thoughts that are in harmony and in relation to the vision. Because then what happens is that those thoughts spawn and create related beliefs and related thoughts. And then over a period of time, we'll start to see signs or expressions of these beliefs, of these interpretations and assumptions within externalized as outer world experience. And then what we want is a radical rearrangement of the outer world as a result of the multiplying, which was happening beneath the surface or subconscious rearrangement of the mind by maintaining the garden of mind, as well as consciously planting in seeds of thought, beliefs, and assumptions related to the vision and allowing those to be brought to the surface. And as in relation to the Water Hyacinth story, it can be radically brought to the surface, resulting in radical change. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.